Okay, that's a very high-minded thing, but I like to take these moments when I get them. It's fun teaching at this level because you guys have studied a lot and you've come through a lot, and there's many concepts that were, like, because we've done the basic structure of knowing the planet signs, how you apply this chart, you're seeing how it's working to be applied, you're seeing the weather forecast, you're seeing the natural order of things. That's really important before you can go into something more transcendental or mystical that's not attached to nature, that's beyond nature. So it's the map of how we're in nature, it's the weather forecast of our consciousness. But it doesn't, you, your, your weather forecast doesn't, it can be pouring rain out, you can still go for a walk if you want, it's just up to you if you want to. You know, or you can say, I can't go, it's a horrible day, and it doesn't have to be that. So the same with every experience in life. And really, you want to experience it all, you want to observe it all, you want to get the whole crystal shining. You want to get this whole light, this whole sphere alive and ready. You want to become the light. And then as you do, you have to get back to your specific priorities. But until we're at that level, I think there's always a certain number of people on the planet, on the planet at that level. Although most of them would be invisible to people, they wouldn't even show that they know these things. They'd just be nice people, simple people. But most of us are stuck somewhere along the way and we have pieces of karma to work on and work through and then planet transits come along we have to, whoa, we got to deal with these things. That's normal stuff. But when the progressions come along, you're born your progressions only go for three months. You only get three signs that your progressed sun goes through. The planets move much slower and you only get so much in a lifetime. You start seeing the texture of circumstances, the soul as it's evolving through life and how which priorities are inwardly there. I found that most useful because it really helps to guide your inner evolution against the outer circumstances and see the evolution of these as growth happens through this. Um, I'm just going to going to go back a little bit see if I for something else to say around this. But this relationship with the two this came to me from after meditating a lot of years in India, I had the vision of these two things. This is almost 49 years ago, 69. 69, yeah, almost 50 years ago. And um, a couple more months, it will be 50 years ago, but that's when I had the vision of how the chain astrology, how the light, the sound, the color, the music, and the astrology and life, that this, how, how this thing, I had a vision of it. I didn't even know what it was at the time. But it got my attention. I started looking at it. I came out, then I came in. I found astrology. I got busy with astrology. I worked at it for 50 years. I've studied it. I've studied more since then than when I was in school. I kind of been studying all my life. That's like my son in the third house. I'm the professional student. But this, it's really on the cusp, second, third, but a lot of planets third. But anyways, this, um, it lit me up in a way that I never got lit up by regular school to get this job or get that job. And it applied to everyone. And it was when I realized it was real, it was like, wow, it's so incredible. I never stopped. It's still, I still, it's still exciting if you this day, 50 days, 50 years later, even though I learned more and learned different level, I had the vision, but I had to learn the mechanics. Now I've learned the mechanics. It's catching up to the vision. They're coming together. And it's still just as exciting and interesting as it was from the day I started. I'm perhaps either a little more grounded or a little closer to dead or something. It's just, it's matured a little bit. But it's still sitting there shining magnificently. So on a simple level right now, you haven't gone up to expand that far. We're going to go farther, much farther into these details, into degrees of the zodiac, into sub-degrees of the zodiac. We've got a long way to go into these deeper divisions. Of course, there's so many differences for everybody. Everybody's still totally unique. But... This is the foundation up to the just randomly put there. So right now, seeing the dark half and the light half of each season, that's a huge thing. Seeing the, the, the split between the fixed signs, the first half and the last half. So trying to relate to the, the trigrams to the to the zodiac. Sometime, probably after the, after this year, after the class is over, I may do a, a 24 week class on the I Ching and build it up right from the I Ching perspective 
and we get a series of webinars to go from that. But uh, I just have to see who's interested in if I can get the time to do this during that in the next year. Um, but it was a great insight for me seeing first the I Ching and then realizing the eight trigrams on the eightfold path of the Buddha, who had four noble, had two basic truths, light and dark, active path, clear, and then it had the four noble truths, then the eightfold path, and how much spirituality and development, spiritual development has come based on those paths. Many of the spiritual things of how to get to wholeness have structures that are like the teaching or like the astrology have some pattern of which you're trying to align to. So there are many different mathematical systems and symbols of how to find your spiritual path. Really, it's not a path. It's like when we die, we don't go anywhere. All our attachments to sensations fall away and we're everywhere, not just in the little things we're attached to in our waking dream. But that these roots and these connections are connected to these things. If your imagination is there, you can go any, any of these. You can go on really Christian sides of astrology. You can go into Buddhist sides. You can go Hindu sides of astrology. There's whole different ways that it's applied. But inside of them all, there's places where there's one or few, a few people that have the spiritual teachings that go with that, that are very wise people and there's things to learn. So how far you want to go depends on how curious you are, how vast your imagination is, how hungry your soul is to want to perceive how bright you want to burn and yeah you can get halfway there and think well I'm so bright it can help other people and then you go off on your path it helps other people but you stop short of going as far necessarily as you if you get all the way instantly you're healing everyone that ever meets you if you get to you become if you turn your consciousness into the consciousness that is nature horoscope that's consciousness that becomes a, play, a vast place of peace. But your spirit is not consciousness. Consciousness changes. Your soul and spirit is a oneness, it's a presence. It's on a whole other level. It's not so much in nature. It's within everything in nature, but it's not nature itself. So there are struggles that go beyond your horoscope, the path of getting beyond your horoscope. That's the spiritual esoteric side of your chart. But to presume to do that without fulfilling the chart first and completing it is really patchwork and disrupts it up, disrupts it. Oh. Sorry, these, these things just organized my thinking for me. So we had the paths. Yeah, so we had the four, four and the eightfold path, kind of the trigrams. I like this little drawing of what's above and what's below with us in between above, what's below, human beings in between, the heaven and earth are fighting each other, or the angels and the demons, if we're called that, the, below, the physical urges are caught, and we're in between, which, and we're going both ways, we're trying to be a bit of everything, and eventually we are everything, above and below, but it's all of us, but it, it's hard to live in a balanced way if we're too physical or some, and not listening to the higher things as well. We will do that at times, but we can't hold it forever. So, okay, I think I'm gonna leave this, this class here. Um, my main point in this class was to point out the zodiac, the trigrams, the eightfold division into the 12, and how it expands where your planets would be and how you would look at things. They, they, these affect houses, these affect areas above, below, rising, setting, daylight, increasing, nighttime, increasing. All of these factors are factors around you and around anyone you meet. They'll have their own puzzle, their own matrix of this. It's incredible. And that you can tune into it. That's fine. It's so easy to be sure I'm seeing it and, and, and you're so sure you're telling somebody else what they need. They can't really, when I'm doing someone's church, I'm, not tell I'm giving them my opinion on how I think their chart will work. I'm just giving my opinion on it and they have to take it and prove it right or wrong. And you have to do the same. But for me, I was chemistry, math. When I found astrology, it opened my mind up and I realized it just changed everything. And I grew so much more than I would have if I just stayed in the scientific mode. 
without including people in life and other things. Okay, so that's it. Thanks. And um, see you next week. Bye.